What's going on guys? It's Sanji from CodeCloud and today we're gonna to take a look at a tool called LocalStack. If you don't know what LocalStack is, it's a tool that allows you to emulate the AWS API on your local machine. So in this video, we're gonna go over why this tool was created, what it is, how does it work, and we'll actually go ahead and actually get a chance to do a quick demo and actually play around with LocalStack. And you'll see what an amazing tool it is, especially if you're developing any kind of you know, application that has to integrate uh, with AWS and interact with the AWS API. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, before we get started going over what is LocalStack and how it works, I wanna talk about why it was ultimately created, what issues it's there to actually help address. So when you're working with AWS, you're gonna be working with the AWS API. And so it doesn't matter if you're writing infrastructure as code with Terraform or with Pulumi, or if you're actually developing an application that interacts with the AWS API, anytime you're working on these things, it's going to need to hit the AWS API to perform some sort of operation. And with AWS, let's say you need to create a EC2 instance. So your application creates an EC2 instance, it's going to send that request to the AWS. The AWS is going to have to wait a little bit to actually go ahead and create those resources and then it'll actually create them. And so the problem with this is that one, it slows down our development and testing time because anytime we wanna test our code or debug our code, we're going to actually have to talk to AWS and create or modify a resource. And we have to wait for AWS to do that. And certain services obviously take quite a bit of time to actually go ahead and do that. And on top of that, since we're creating actual resources in AWS, they're going to incur a charge. And so this is a bit problematic because we don't want to have to continuously pay for resources that we're not really using. We just want to test our code. And this is especially true if you're in a continuous integration environment where you have to run some sort of automated tests in a short period of time. It's going to be very hard to actually interact with AWS because now you have to wait for all of those things to actually get created and then subsequently destroyed afterwards. So what is LocalStack? LocalStack is a tool that runs on your local machine that emulates the AWS API. And so if you are developing your application, instead of having to send requests to AWS to actually test out your code, what's gonna happen is on your local machine, you're gonna run a software called LocalStack that emulates the AWS API. So it's got the same exact API endpoints that AWS has. And so your code can then be configured to send the request to LocalStack and then LocalStack will create those resources locally. And it doesn't actually create the resources. It's important to understand that. It's just there to mimic the API. So it'll accept the request and then send a response back saying, hey, I created the EC2 instance. There's no actual EC2 instance, but remember from a development perspective, when you're working on an application, we don't really care. We're just here to test our application. So we don't need to actually create those specific resource instances, it'll just make it look like it created it. And so that way we don't have to actually physically interact with AWS. We don't have to recur, incur any actual costs on AWS because we're not creating anything on AWS. And the requests are staying local to our machine. So we don't have to send anything to AWS and wait for have to create it. It's done all locally as quick as possible. And once again, this is fantastic for continuous integration environments. Now to get started with LocalStack, the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, actually install it on our local machine because it's gonna be running on there. So go to localstack.cloud and here you wanna go to the documentations page and we're gonna go under getting started and we'll go to installation. So there's a couple of different ways to install this. It mainly runs on a Docker container, but they do have a CLI that helps automate the whole uh, Docker container process where you can just run like a local stack start command and it'll automatically spin up the container. So you can install the local stack CLI. It's got the inst uh, installation directions for each of the different uh, platforms. Or if you want to just, if you're already familiar with Docker and you want to just set that up yourself, they have an example of a Docker compose config file, which is right here. And you can just go ahead and copy that and run that on your local machine. Or if you just want to run the Docker run command, you could scroll down a little bit further and we've got this. So you could just copy this and then run it. So I've got the CLI installed, so I'm just going to use that. I'm gonna show you guys how you can do that. But if you wanna just run the Docker container directly, you can do that as well. So I've got my terminal up, and if I do a local stack, dash dash help, this is gonna show us all of the different options that we have for the local stack CLI. And keep in mind, you don't have to do this if you've already run the Docker container. But here we've got all the commands, and the one we wanna start off with is start. So I'm gonna do a local stack, start and that's going to start up local stack so it's going to um, spin up the container that actually runs the local stack code automatically for us all right and so now it's up and running 
and the important output is here. So local stack is going to be running on our local machine, 127.0.0.1 colon 4566. So that's the port it's going to run on your local machine. Just remember that. And it doesn't matter which method you use to install it. It's always going to be running on your local machine at port 4566. All right, and so I'm going to open up another terminal. And so now let's test out and see if we can interact with local stack and see if it operates exactly the way AWS API does. So I'm going to first start off by making use of the AWS CLI because the AWS CLI is really just a wrapper around their API. And so normally, let's say if I want to work with S3, I would do AWS S3. And then if I type in LS, this is going to list out all of the S3 buckets that we have. However, if I run this command right now, what it's going to do is it's going to send this request to AWS, which we don't want. The whole point of installing local stack is we want to interact with the local stack. So to change the CLI to actually go to a different endpoint, we have to pass in a flag, which is endpoint dash URL. And then you say equals, and then you provide the URL, which is going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost. That's because it's running on our machine and then port 4566. And that comes from the port that it's running on. So this is going to send a request to our local machine on port 554566, which is going to get forwarded to the local stack container. So if I run this, we'll give it a second. It's going to talk to the local machine and we should see that nothing gets printed out because we have no buckets. It's a brand new install of local stack. So let's actually go ahead and test and see if we can create an S3 bucket. So I'm going to run the same command, just hit up arrow. And then instead of LS, I'm going to say MB for make bucket. And then we'll give the bucket name of how about test dash bucket. All right, so it created the bucket for us. And now if I go to the S3 LS command, we should see that we now have one bucket being listed there. So this is us actually creating a bucket on our local stack machine and not actually on AWS. So this isn't incurring any cost. This isn't running on AWS. This is running on our local machine. And keep in mind, this bucket can't do anything. There's no actual bucket. It just operates from an API perspective like a bucket normally would. So it's just something to keep in mind. So now let's move on to a Terraform example to show you how we can configure Terraform to interact with local stack instead of creating resources on AWS. So I've got a Terraform file here. And you can see the configuration is pretty straightforward. We've got the provider of AWS. Um, I've got the region configured under the provider. And then here under the resource section, this is a very simple example. All it's going to do is it's going to create um, five EC2 instances of a size of T2 micro. And then it's going to name them web server zero, web server one, web server two, and so on. So that's all it's going to do. It's going to create five servers. And obviously creating multiple servers, cre even just creating one EC2 instance can take a little bit of time on AWS, but you'll see that with local stack, since it's not actually configuring a EC2 server, it's just mimicking the API, it's gonna be so much quicker to actually test out our Terraform code. But as it is right now, it's going to actually try and configure these resources on AWS. We don't wanna do that. We wanna change it so that it's going to talk to our local stack. And so to do that, we have to do a couple of things. Under provider here, the first thing that we want to do is change the endpoint, just like we did with the AWS CLI. And we just say, uh, we're going to have to do this for every single service that our Terraform code is using, but we're only using EC2. So you say EC2 equals, and then once again, you're going to do HTTP colon slash slash localhost 4566. And the same thing applies for all of the other services and anything else that you want to create on Terraform, if you're using S3, that you're going to have to also do S3 and you would just do the same thing, which is HTTP colon slash slash localhost 4566. But we're only doing EC2, so I'm just going to use just EC2. But you'd have to do this for every other resource type that you're using on Terraform. Now, there's, we're not quite done yet. There's a couple of flags that we have to provide in because we're not actually interacting with AWS. The first one is going to be skip credentials validation. We'll set that to true. And then we'll need skip metadata API check. We'll set that to true as well. And then we need skip requesting account ID set to true. And at that point, that's all you need to do. Everything else should operate exactly the way you would expect when you're interacting with AWS normally. So I'm going to test this out. We'll run a Terraform apply 
dash dash auto approve. And we'll wait for that to run. All right, and we can see the output here. It's going to create five EC2 instances, and it's actually going to go ahead and create those EC2 instances. All right, so it was about done in about 15 seconds. So we were able to create five servers in 15 seconds, and you would see it take about the same amount of time if you did 100 servers, because remember, we're not actually creating physical servers. And so now if I run my command using the AWS CLI to see all of the different EC2 instances that were created, I can do AWS dash dash endpoint dash URL, change that to be the local stack. And we can do EC2 describe instances. And this is going to print out all of our instances. And we can see all five of our instances. If we wanted tr a truncated output, we can run this following command. This will just print out just the instance IDs just to confirm that we've got all five there. And we can see that we were able to successfully create five EC2 instances, and these are the instance IDs. And if we want, we can then do a Terraform destroy. And we can destroy that. All right, and now all five servers have been successfully destroyed. So that's gonna wrap things up for this video. We got a chance to learn about local stack. And so now if you're ever developing any applications that have to work with AWS, you don't actually have to interact with the actual AWS API. You could just mock it and emulate it using local stack on your local machine. And keep in mind, it's also great for your uh, continuous integration system. So if you have to do any kind of testing within your CI pipeline, you can always make use of local stack instead of actually talking to the AWS API. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.